Hallelujah. Very quickly, I'm going to go into the word of the Lord right now for today. And I want to start off by congratulating and by wishing each and every father, father-to-be, aspiring father, father figure, anyone out there, a happy Father's Day. We love you. We love you. Happy Father's Day to you. This is an awesome day to be celebrating this with you. The role of fathers in society cannot be overemphasized. This, that's the truth. Now, I, 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 I'm trusting God to give us a little bit of inspiration today, even as we go into his word very briefly. I want, I want God to give us inspiration because I, I recognize that one or two or three people, maybe even four or five, listening may, may not have had the, the ideal relationship they would have loved to have with their biological father. And as a result of that absence, it feels like they cannot reconcile or connect with a loving father like God. Because it's like your, your earthly dad maybe messed up or did not really do his duties. So you're struggling to realize, how can a God love me when my earthly father messed up? Well, it is because of you that we are here. Hallelujah. It's because of you that God has created a day like this to remind you that there is one who is a present father, who is a loving father, who is there to show you his love and to demonstrate it, not in words alone, but in action. Let us just give, you know, God a, a wonderful shout of praise, even as we close our eyes and as we say a word of prayer very briefly before we go into the word of the Lord, major, major. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you because you are the father of all and you dwell in light. Hey, yeah, yeah. So brilliant and so unapproachable. You are the father eternal, immortal, invincible, the only wise God. The one who loves us so greatly that he has allowed himself as mighty as he is to still tabernacle in our Little mortal bodies as his temple. We thank you because you are the one that has given us the spirit of adoption. Whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. Abba is a term of endearment. We thank you for loving us the way you do. We give you praise because of that which you're going to do today. Open the hearts of your people, gracious Father, by the power of your spirit. And let your word land on engrafted, meek hearts so that it might produce salvation in the name of Jesus. Tattoo your word and insignia your word upon the hearts of your people. Let there be no resistance to the expressive flow and power in your word, O oh God. Brief as it may be, let it produce life-changing illumination so that men and women across the globe may begin to walk into freedom. Thank you because you hear me always. Oh, blessed Father, I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to go very quickly into scripture. The anchor text of scripture for today is James chapter 1 and verse 17. James chapter 1 and verse 17. Again, most of us know this, and I'm going to say it from the, you know, KJV version. It says, every good gift, whew, my God, and every perfect gift is from above mm, and cometh down from the Father, capital F, this tells you this is not a regular dude. This is not a regular dude. From the Father, capital F, of lights, plural, not singular, not light, but lights, mm. with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It is important, like I said, to note that the word of God there says lights. We're talking about Father's Day. This is the day to discover the true Father, the true Abba. You know, about 14 years ago, when I just started my investment banking career um, on Wall Street, one of the gentlemen who was in my analyst class, you know, was a Jewish wonderful brother who is still a very, very awesome friend of mine till today. He's become like a family friend, okay? He, you know, when things got so stressful in the place of work, I would see him go into a specific room and he would get on the phone with his mom and his dad. We were in Charlotte, North Carolina then. We were in Charlotte, North Carolina. But, but he would call his mom and his dad who were in New York. And I will hear, just because of the volume, I will hear, you know, on the periphery, I will hear him, you know, lamenting. And he would say, oh, you know, Ima, Ima, which means mother in Hebrew. And then he would say, Abba, 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 the work is too much. It's stressful. We're working long hours. 
And right there, the revelation behind Abba hit me. All this while, as a Christian, I had been saying Abba, but I really had no idea what Abba meant. I thought it meant Father, but it is deeper than Father. Abba means beloved daddy. Now, that is the daddy that I hope, by the grace of God, to introduce to you today. A daddy is different from a father. Guinea pigs can be fathers. Oh, yes. Dogs can be fathers. Anyone can deliver sperm and egg and then boom. But a daddy is a different ballgame altogether. A daddy means a term of endearment. There is a relationship there. This is someone you know, you trust. You can be naked in front of. You can be vulnerable with. You can go and say, yo, yo daddy, I, I, can't, I can't do this anymore, man. I'm tired. I'm... You can be real with him. With a daddy, there is a judgment-free zone. With a daddy, there is constant support. There is constant provision. There is constant availableness. With a daddy, there is presence. Oh, yes. Not a father. Anybody can be a father. That's the truth. But daddy is a whole other different ball game. So what I hope to introduce to you today is the dimension, because the word of God we just looked at in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 17, James 1, 17, it says, father of lights, plural. I hope by the grace of God very quickly to go through five lights that define the fatherhood of Abba. Whew. And I hope after this, your heart will be open unto him and it will be remembered for all time that it was on June 19th, 2022 in the year of our Lord that I received and I understood finally the love of the true father of all. Jesus teaches us an amazing thing in the book of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus, our example in PBC, our pastor in PBC, our role model in PBC, Jesus the Christ. He says something amazing. His disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, Rabbi, which means teacher, teacher, teach us how to pray. We've seen you pray, but we don't know how to do this thing called prayer. You know I mean, we're just rambling words. Teach us to pray. And Jesus looked at them almost kind of from a place of compassion. And he says, you want to learn how to pray? I'll tell you how to pray. I got you. And he says, this is how you should pray. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 all the way through to 13. He says, after this manner, pray therefore. And then he says, what we've come to now know as our Lord's prayer. He says, our Father. My God. Not right there is a six-month sermon and series. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And then we continue to go on and on and on and on. But this is interesting to me. That Jesus Christ, teaching his disciples how to pray, in the same way now, myself, by privilege, I'm teaching this word of God Jesus tells us something very amazing there. That the favorite name that God wants you to call him <laughs> is not God. It's Father. That's really amazing. That's, the people of the world will go... <laughs> it's like mind-boggling. Jesus could have said to his disciples, pray like this, our God who art in heaven. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. That's not what you do. Our Father... This is a relationship dynamic. Christianity is not a random religion. Christianity is a love-based faith. It's a relationship-driven faith. It's not just some routine thing you do on a Sunday. It's a way of life. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's amazing. So the favorite name of God that he wants his children to call him is not God. It's Father. How do I know? Jesus told me. Very, very, very important there. Now, this father is a father of lights. Plural, like I said. So let's look at the first light that covers this, our loving father, this amazing father. On this Father's Day, I want us to really understand this. Oh, I want us to understand this. The first light we're going to look at is the light of his love. The light of his love. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. KJV. Most of us can quote this offhand. It says, And God the Father commended his love. KJV. Commended his love towards us. In that, in that, in that, while we were yet sinners, all of us were born messed up, jacked up. Every one of us is flawed, character-wise. 
serious weaknesses, serious shortcomings, myself included, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We hated him, and yet he commended his love towards us. Now, that's KJV. KJV might be a little bit of a Elizabethan English, old school English, 16th century queen Elizabethan English. Let's make it a little bit more contemporary. Let's look at the Amplified Classic. The Amplified Classic of that same scripture, James chapter 5 and verse 8. James chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, it says this. But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ, uh, the Messiah, uh, the Anointed One, he died for us. My God, listen, I don't know any father out there on earth who will give his child for a good person. How much more giving your child as a sacrificial lamb for people who hate you? My God, I'm talking about a father who is different. I know your earthly dad may have messed up. I know it's possible. It's possible that men messed up. We, 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 are, we, are, we are weak. We, we, do, we make all kinds of mistakes. But I'm telling you about a father. I am introducing to you, Abba, on this Father's Day, a loving father who is different. He is unique. He's, 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 he's wired differently. His DNA is different. Yes. In that while you still hated him, he sent his son to die in your place so that you might be reconciled back to him. That's the loving father that leaves the 99 and goes after the one just to win you back to the rest of the ship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the first light we think about, when we think about father of lights, is the light of his love. Father of lights. Light number one, the light of his love. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. The second light we're going to look at in the fatherhood of Abba is the light of his presence. Man, it says in Psalms 46 and verse 1. Psalms 46 and verse 1. Abba, God the Father, he is our refuge and our strength. A very present hell in time of need. Listen to me. One of the biggest issues plaguing society today is absentee fathers. Yes, it's absentee fathers. So, a, a, a dude, you know, knocks up a lady, the lady is pregnant, and then the dude disappears, and he absconds from responsibility. <laughs> because it's like, I don't know about this child, I'm, I'm out of here. Absentee fathers is a very common thing in the world. But no, 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 no. Psalms 46 and verse 1, this father is different. He says, God is a very present help in time of trouble. When you need him, he shows up. He's always there. He is always there. Very close to you. Psalms 23, Psalms 23 and verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, you, PBC, will fear no evil. Why? Because Abba, our Father, is with us. Presence, presence is known for his presence. He abides with his people. He is never an absentee father. No, 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 no. God is a present father. That's number two. So the light of his presence is the second light. Father of lights. The light of his presence is the second light. The third light, very quickly, is the light of his goodness. Now, let me tell you something. Everybody says, oh, that guy, he's a jolly good fella. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? He's a jolly good fella. Listen to me. There is no one that is good except God. Every goodness we do is a function of God shining his light through us. I'm telling you. Oh, yes, he is the one who is good. He is the one who is good. He is in, inherently the DNA of God. His disposition, his inner makeup is good. Psalms 100 and verse 5. Psalms 100 and verse 5. The KJV version says that thou art good and your mercies endureth forever. The mercy of God is a function of God's goodness. He is good. He is good. He is good. Oh, God is good. Psalms 107. And verse 8, Psalms 107 and verse 8, the Bible says, All that men will praise the Lord. Why? For his goodness. And his wonderful works to the children of men. God is a good God. He is a good, good father. He loves you more than you know. In fact, he loves you more than you love yourself. I'm telling you the truth. 
Oh, yes, he loves you more than you love yourself. Because there's some times when even you, you are tired of yourself. But God is always there. Come back home, my son. Come back home, my daughter. Everybody talks about the prodigal son. Have you ever heard of that story? The prodigal son. Psalms 34 and verse 8. Psalms 34 and verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, this is a work of faith. I know it's difficult for you to taste what you've not yet seen. But that's what it's called faith. The world teaches you, see, and then taste. I mean, think about this, man. If you go to a restaurant, <laughs> you don't taste blindly. No. You say, give me the food. Let me look at the appetizer so that I can see first and then taste. But that is why the world is different from the kingdom of God. The world teaches you to follow, follow your sight. Faith tells you to believe even if you've not yet seen. So the Bible tells us in Psalms 34 and verse 8, it says, taste and see. Correspondingly, you would see that the Lord, this father, is a good father. So that is the light of his goodness, number three. Number four, as we begin to bring this to a close, is the light of God's word. Oh, this one gets me excited. <laughs> this gets me excited. The Bible says in Psalms 119, and verse 105. Psalms 119 and verse 105. It says, Thy word, the word of the Father, it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Always he guides me with his word. Scripture says, The entrance of your word giveth light, 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 and understanding to the simple. Guys, the word of God illuminates the hearts of men. The word of God will shine through into the darkest parts of our hearts brilliantly with the light of the gospel and then men come into light. And once you come into light, your salvation has come. Glory to God. And then that brings me to the final light, which is the light of his salvation. The light of his salvation, which is a function of his word. The light of his salvation. The Bible says in Psalms 27 and verse 1, Psalms 27 and verse 1, Psalms 27 and verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light, because I have seen light, I am saved, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Once you've seen the light of the Father and his love towards you, fear gets dispelled, cast out completely. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Who is bothering you? Who is threatening you? Is it a sickness? Is it some boss that is impossible to manage? Is it some fear that has crippled you for years since you were a teenager? Shine the light of God's gospel upon it. And I tell you right now, you are declared free even now as you are watching. In the name of Jesus, you cannot come back next week Sunday with whatever that is bothering you. I declare you free in the name of Jesus. He that the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Glory to Jesus forevermore. I will conclude by inviting you to have company and get to know this father, this Abba, A-B-B-A, this loving daddy, this daddy who wants a relationship with you more than anything. He sacrificed his first and only begotten son to win you and I back. He is still pouring out his love till today, present moment in time. He's inviting you into a place of fellowship and koinonia with him. Intimacy is what he wants from you. He doesn't want a God creation relationship. No, he wants a father to child relationship. So if you are listening right now and your relationship with God, the father, not God, the God you read in a movie or you watch in a movie or you read in a dictionary, but God, the father I just presented to you, the present father. If you want to, you know, come back to him. I know you may have wandered off. New York, Dubai, Lagos, London, Spain, Paris, Australia, wherever you're joining us from, you know, may have distracted you away from the Father's love. But you're saying, no, today, I want to come back. I want to come back to my Father's house. I want to come back like the prodigal son did. He came back to the prodigal father who was prodigious in love. If you want to make that decision, I invite you. Just simply repeat after me this very short and simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that I am a sinner, and I repent of my sins. I confess Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. Teach me how to live. 
Teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk. Write my name in the book of life. Plant me in your custody. Watch over me in your jealousy. And never let me go. I believe that I am saved. To the glory of your name. In Jesus name. Amen. Very quickly. If you, met, if you just said that prayer. Guess what? Your entire life has changed for the better. Welcome to the family of God. It's that simple. You don't have to pay any money. You don't have to do anything. You're just, you're just like that. You are saved. The gift of salvation is free because Christ already paid a very expensive, expensive charge for it. God bless you and God keep you. We look forward to staying in touch with you. Please go to our website again, www.weprevail.org and click on the salvation tab and fill in your details if you just said that prayer. We will follow up with you and we will bring you into the factory of active discipleship in a place of love. God bless you.